Welcome back to Cigar Time, the nation's most viewed cigar program dedicated to you, the cigar smoker. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Today, <laughs> our first cigar is the Eduardo Dominico. Yes, it's an Eduardo Dominico. It has a uh, Connecticut wrapper with uh, Dominican filler and binder. So. And this is made in our factory in, uh, in Santiago, the Dominican Republic, by my sister-in-law. We make a lot of cigars there. We do we make do. many, many, many? many, many thousands. We got the Suave, Dominico. Mm -hmm. Edition. The quickie. The Quickie, the Edition Especial. Yeah. The EMs. The Can't even remember them all. The 5040s. 5040, the Maduro, the Double Forte, the Double Forte, the Shorty, Quickie. We should open another Gordo's. Oh, the Gordo's, <laughs> the 5080s. Yeah, the Gordo's, yeah. Are we going to ever smoke yeah. a Gordo? Oh, I don't know if I want to smoke not. a Gordo. And we have, we have a very large rolling gallery, and those people, <laughs> they're working day and night <laughs> making you cigars. Alex, Scott's suggestion, we should open an Eduardo's store. An Eduardo's nice. store. A Eduardo Boutique. There you go. Here you Good go. idea. Hey. Sure. Why not? Uh, Paul, why don't you lead it off with your comments on the cigar? It's way too mild for me. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, Paul. Does it have flavor? Uh, a little. What? Oh, Mom. This is actually spicier than I remember. How did he get on the iron? A little tiny bit of spice. Off. It is a little bit of spice. Well, yeah, well, that's All right, we're going to move right by it. It's like the professor on the island. Scott? This is, He's it's dead. a creamy. <laughs> he just died. He just died. Yeah, oh, my little, God. Uh, I, I like this. It's really good. It's... Um, it does have a little a little uh, touch of spice, but at the same yeah. time, it's really creamy and it's almost like a like vanilla e, if that's a word or not. Vanilla e. Vanilla e. He okay. just made it up. Vanilla ice, vanilla e. Oh, yeah. don't oh, vanilla ice. Yeah. Okay. Hey, for my money, this is a great cigar. Not a heavy cigar. You here's know, your, it's a, here's your money. Yeah, well, it is not money. <laughs> it's on it's on the lighter side, but very tasty. Got a little spice to it. You know, for four dollars and fifty cents, it's a wonderful cigar. Not bad. Um, no. I agree with Paul. It's, it's too mild. It doesn't have enough taste for me. I do get the creaminess of it. Uh, it does come through, um, but it's just too mild for me. It's too mild. To me, it's like smoking air. Coming from a Reserva oh Real fan, yeah. yes. Reserva like Real has a ton of flavor. Well, Reserva Real has a ton of taste. These two are real he-men. So they, Rob's just, not a he-man. They gotta have a he's little. He's afraid of full body. They have to have no, cigars not. with a little hair on them. Sure. Well, I think this one does have a little hair on it, and I don't like it. <laughs> it does. Uh, you don't like it either? It does not. Did it really have hair? It's a little hair. It's a little hair. <laughs> a little hair. <laughs> no extra charge for the hair. Hey, it burns yeah. really nice. <laughs> Look at that this ash. Is not, this is not, it's got a, it's got yeah, a it's superb ash hair. on it. Excuse me. That's your side. This is, sorry. Your side, pardon. This is not my favorite cigar out of our collection. It's okay um, if you're looking for something with a little bite to it, kick hair on it. <laughs> then you go to the Dominico, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> Sorry, I, sh I shed it on your cigar. <laughs> well, that's why, here. that's why our Eduardo brand has taste for every connoisseur. That's yes. true. It has Absolutely. a taste for everyone. Exactly. 20 different flavors. All right, I'm almost afraid to say the next word. Let's rate it, because this is going to be a <laughs> wide <laughs> swing. Let's see if you can do the math on this. Get out your calculators, people. 3.5 for me. Oh, brutal. Wow. I give it a 4.25. I give it a 4.252. Really? Yes, I do. Because it's a decent cigar. Taking into the account, you know what? Taking the, into price account the price yeah. and everything like that, I give it a 2.75. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> you're only doing this because you're trying to make my calculations yeah, tougher. Yeah. 3.25. All right, so Ooh. three of you are wrong and two of us are right. Yeah, that's right. There is no right and wrong when it comes to rating cigars. That's not true when cigars. it comes to Eduardo's. No. 3.82 three and 5 eighths. Check the calculators. Uh, what's our first cigar? Our, our lovely Miss T is going to tell us all about it. It's a actually. Blanco number no. 9. Thank it's you. a Corojo Hamano and Escuro wrapper. The filler and the binder is Nicaraguan. The sizes are Double Corona, Gordo, Lancero, Robusto, Toro, and Torpedo. Ooh, it's the first one with a Torpedo in a couple weeks. Yep. That's good. Mm -hmm. I love Torpedo. And the taste profile is spicy mix of earth and coffee. How do you get spicy mix of earth and coffee? That's enough. I'll smoke the cigar. Good. I'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, Rob. That was nice. It's a beautiful wrapper, I'll tell you that. It's, it's a beautiful a, band. Really nice. It's a very toothy wrapper, actually. Yeah. Yes, it is. And what is toothy? Rob. Got too many teeth. What's toothy? 
It's got a lot of veins in it. No, the veins are not too veins. It's kind of the bumps, the bumps, the bumps. oil I see it. It's the little clusters of oil, which I learned from our friend Paul. All right, so what, what's it taste like? It's an earthy mix earthy of mix uh, spicy coffee. You're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> or a right spicy there. mix of earth and coffee. <laughs> so what's our topic, guys, today? That's your Paul Paul's field. our topic. Oh, Paul's our topic. Paul, where are we at, Paul? I'm like, I can never light a cigar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you What do you do over Give me there? a second, guys. <laughs> Go to, We're around the commercial world. Go to commercial. We're commercial. We've got two new stores. One in uh, yeah. Fisher all right, and one right, in Ludwig's right. Corner. Oh, also he's ready now. Shh, quiet yeah. on set. All right. <laughs> Today I'm not going anywhere. I'm talking about Sumatra wrappers, ah. which okay. come from all over the place. Mostly from Sumatra, though. Mm, no. Um, well, then why don't they call it Jersey City wrappers? Well, I was going to tell you. <laughs> Can't sell that. Sumatra seed is what we call a base seed, which means that many different breeds have been developed from the Sumatra seed. Uh, it, it was the first seed taken out of the Americas and planted elsewhere in the world for cigar purposes. This was done by the Dutch who did it all over the world. Uh, the Dutch did a lot of things I was about to cigars. say, the Dutch yes. was first, huh? Yeah. They were big on sailing around and making things on their own that other people made, but making their own version of things and selling it wherever they could. They're big on smoking anything. Uh, so where they took it was Southeast Asia. And the first place they took it was Sumatra, and that's why they called it Sumatra. They also took it to the tropical South Asian island of Java. Um, and they also took it to Indonesia. Now, Sumatra seed grown in Indonesia got a really bad rap during the boom. Yeah. Primarily because people were buying cigars so fast and factories were trying to make the cigars so fast that they had to buy tobacco anywhere they could find it and there was a whole lot of Indonesian wrapper available. Uh, so it was typically under fermented, it wasn't aged properly, and there were an awful lot of cigars that people thought were awful uh, with Indonesian version of the Sumatra wrapper. The truth is, Sumatra grown in Indonesia is a fine tobacco uh, if it's treated properly, which is pretty much the case with any tobacco. You have, you have to treat it right if you want it to taste good. But that's only the beginning for Sumatra. They also grew a version of it that was called TBN, which doesn't sound like anything, but go figure the Dutch. Uh, they hey, made wait, a, they're, they're very progressive people. Did they, they spend any time in Amsterdam? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I don't remember any of it. I figure. <laughs> figures. Um, they made a version called Basuki. Uh, I haven't heard that term in a long time. I they play the bazooka. <laughs> then <laughs> in grade school. That was Rudy Bazooki, right? Uh, no, I chewed a lot of bazooki, bazooki bubble gum. Bazooki gum, yeah. <laughs> oh, they brought it to Africa and it became called Cameroon. 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 I said it first. You said it first. Sorry, I got excited. Uh, they brought it to, hey. Ni actually the Dutch brought it to Nicaragua and it was grown there. Um, but it really didn't come into its own as a as a seed stock until it was brought to Ecuador. And Ecuador and Sumatra is now one of the most heavily used wrapper tobaccos in the industry. Uh, just to give you an idea, Ecuador and Sumatra is on cigars like Hoyo de Monterey, like Punch, like the Rocky Patel Decade. It's used on a lot of cigars. <laughs> Um, if you flipped open the magazines and looked at the evaluations and descriptions of a lot of cigars, you would see Ecuador Sumatra all over the place. Do they, always, do they always call it Ecuador Sumatra or do they just sometimes go with Ecuadorian? They frequently just go with Ecuadorian and sometimes they'll just say Sumatra. Okay. Generally speaking, if you see Sumatra, they're talking about Ecuadorian. If it's from Asia, they'll call it uh, uh, Indonesian. Indonesian. Okay. It's all the same seed. Gotcha. In more recent times, they've even started to grow it in the Dominican Republic, and the real pioneer in, in growing Sumatra seed in the Dominican Republic is Lito Gomez, and 
he has demonstrated that you can make a very, very powerful tobacco out of Ecuador and Sumatra. Uh, he uses it as a wrapper. Uh, it's usually sun-grown. It's usually hev heavily fermented, and it will usually kick your butt. What cigar has that wrapper on it? On his? Yeah. Uh, actually, a few, quite a few of them. Really? Yeah. It's, so it's Dominican Sumatra. Okay, so they just call it Dominican. Yeah, you, uh, you, they don't they don't tell you what the seed stock is. Seed, gotcha. Um, that's all I was going to say. Well, oh, okay. Same yeah. one. <laughs> I, I was. I, I was, thought you could go on that and put item. Well, I, I could, but I didn't think I should. I have a question, real quick. The the, the La Rora 107 that has the Ecuador wrapper is that the same? That is, is that? a sun grown Ecuadorian Sumatra. Okay. And here's here's the. From my personal perspective, the thing about Sumatra tobacco is more than any other kind is that it's adaptable. You can make a Sumatra wrapper that looks like Connecticut and more or less tastes like it. You can go that light with it all the way over to super dark sun-grown powerhouse tobaccos like the VSG wrapper. Uh, like the the La Aurora wrapper, or like some of the stuff that uh, that Lido does. How do they make it lighter? They grow it in. I mean, with like lighter in flavor, you mean, or lighter in color? Both. How do they do it lighter in flavor? Uh, that has to do with how much sun they let it get from where on the plant they cut it and right. how long they ferment it. It's it's right. like the most adjustable tobacco on the market. You can really do almost anything with it. Wow. You can make it. A, Killer. Only uses, do they ever use it for filler or anything? It's always wrapper. Uh, very I know I've seen binder, but. Yeah, very occasionally as a binder. Um, no, people don't use Sumatra as a, as a filler, except there are a couple of Filipino brands that do, mm -hmm. and a couple of uh, Dutch cigars from Europe that will occasionally Biting use it. Fighting pack. Excuse me? <laughs> no, Philippine brand. Yeah, Biting that is an, that is an old Filipino yeah. brand. Fighting no, so it, they don't use it for filler because of burning qualities, or because it just doesn't have enough flavor for the for filler. It's also it's expensive to grow, mm. so okay. using it as wrapper makes sense for the farmers because they okay. get top, top dollar for the right. wrapper, and using it as filler they get very little money for it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Paul. That was uh, very edifying. I think. Mm. I, not I quite feel sure, edified. No, <laughs> do you <laughs> sounded good. All right, I think it's time for us to uh, talk about our Blanco number nine. Who wants to take the lead on this? On all right. Okay, I'll go. Okay. Um, well, I was, I was hoping we'd do it a little bit later because I really am enjoying this cigar. I'll keep enjoying it. And I really do taste the mix of the uh, earth and the coffee, so that's <laughs> that's good. I guess I get it now. Um, it's a good cigar, like he said. What did you call it? Um, with the veins. Toothy. 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 Yeah, it's a little toothy, but I don't quite, you know, really notice you know pay attention to that um it's on the medium side it's not full body it's very smooth um the band is is interesting um doesn't the band mean something the band is cool yeah doesn't the it mean something really i cool. forget i think that means something but yeah um anyway it's a great cigar so rob <laughs> um i like the cigar a lot um david blanco makes the cigar yeah. it's very very good um it also it almost looks like a risotto wrapper. Yeah, it, it does. does. Mm, it, it does, does. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it has a reddish hue to it. Well, it's Coro. And Habano. It's very I, I like it. I think it's a really good uh, a really good cigar. I, I smoke them all the time. Oh. Didn't know that. I do. Didn't realize that. I am new to the Blanco cigars and this is one of the first ones I've smoked. I think it's a new cigar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just came out. Basically. Blanco and, Blanco. Uh, I find it very tasty. It's very pleasant to smoke. Has a little on the back of the tongue, a little mm -hmm. little rub on the back of the tongue. Mm -hmm. uh, altogether pleasant. I'm not familiar. Someone can enlighten me what the price points are. I know they're not real expensive. Six something. Six fifty. Six, yeah, six okay. Yeah. yeah. So they're popular it's a price. Reasonably priced. Yeah, it's very they're popular price. They're popular price. Which which makes this cigar a star in my eyes. Yeah. Very tasty cigar. Yeah. Um, I, I really like the wrapper. It's beautiful. Um, I don't think it has as it's spicy. I don't think it has as much flavor um, as everybody else. I do get a little bit of that leather. I'm not getting the coffee. Mm. I'm mostly getting spice, but I'm getting decaf. It's, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. It, it's it's okay. I mean, it's 
It's not bad. Well, you know what the opposite of not bad is? Oh, very good. Oh. Not okay. Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll go with that. All right. Okay, sure. we'll go with that. Paul? Well, I, I got to go in the exact opposite direction of Scott because the predominant taste I get out of this is coffee. Yeah, really? I get a lot of coffee. I, it, it, yeah. like, I just, yeah, I like just had very, coffee. Very distinct, rich coffee taste. Uh, I don't get a lot of spice, just a little. Uh, overall, I think it's a little on the light side of medium, mm -hmm. and I, I like a little bit more out of my cigar than this. But it's, it would be good for a morning cigar. Yeah. Because it, it's already got the coffee. Or Is that French, like 8 a.m. or 1 a.m.? Yeah. Morning. Well, yeah. no, that would be eight, 7 or 8. Is okay. 1 a.m. late or early for you? Uh, that's late. Okay, let's just check it. Remember, Paul smokes about a dozen cigars a day. Not, Not including what he <laughs> smokes here. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, I yeah, guess I, it, got I guess it, it's, it's probably time to put a number on this. Four point two five. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Uh, I give it a straight four. Paul, straight four. Uh, Three point five. Ooh. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. What do you want from me? I go with a solid four. Dang, <laughs> oh, uh, hey, I knew I should have said a four. <laughs> I suppose it was straight four, solid four. Solid four. <laughs> so that's four point oh seven and three quarters. Oh, I do like the band. I have to agree with that. I know, but I think it does stand for something. You and Dad love the band. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the the band, it's the ninth blend that they came up with. Oh, okay. Is it? It is. Oh. They started out making a blend and it wasn't good, and then they went to number two. Ah. And they this is the ninth blend. Maybe we should wait, wait until try ten. number ten. Yeah. 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 So. Well, I think uh, as we're getting on our top five cigar countdown, as wait. we get closer to the number one, number we two. probably should try to devote a little more time because we're at number two right now. Absolutely. Yeah. And Paul, why don't I let you lead off with number two? All right. Well, my number two cigar is the Alec Bradley Tempest. Mm. I love it. It is a, a Honduran grown Criollo 98 wrapper. Uh, interestingly, it's not the wrapper leaf that they use, they use the Viso leaf as a wrapper, that means it's from a different spot on the plant, it's stronger, it's got more flavor than the wrapper would normally have. It's got an Indonesian binder, that means it's Sumatra, but it's from Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that. Like, and, like the Eduardo. And yes, and the filler blend is Honduran and Nicaraguan. And that cigar, the, the Tempest, aside from being in the top 25 cigars in 2008, was the first of the newer generation of Alec Bradley oh, cigars. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first one to come out of their Raices Cubanas factory in Honduras, and I think really set the tone for what they were going to be doing going forward. I just enjoy the cigar a lot. It's full-bodied, it's spicy, it's rich. It hits all the, all the buttons for me. I think we, since you mentioned the binder so much, I think it's important <laughs> to let all the folks at home know, you know, what the binder, what it does, and what it adds or doesn't add to the overall taste of the cigar. Usually a binder doesn't add much of anything to the taste. The job of the binder is to hold the cigar together physically and to help it burn more consistently. Scott? Oh, I'm sorry. And, and I was just going to say Indonesian tobacco is good for that because it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, so it doesn't really throw things off as you blend the fillers mm -hmm. and the wrapper. Scott? I'm going to come way out of left field and go with a Nicaraguan Puro. Again? Well, it's surprising to you. It's the uh, Puro? No, it's the oh. Padron 1964 Exclusivo. Ah. Padron has been in the, I mean, it's no surprise what that I like that cigar. Yes. What? Yeah. The answer is yes. I think Max used that on the last show. That oh, was his he? number three. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wrong. It should be his number two. <laughs> Excellent choice. Yeah. Yeah. Nicaraguan Puro, um, a fantastic cigar. Mm. Again, Padron, the Maduro or the Natch? The Natch. I mean, the, the Maduro. The Maduro. Yeah. 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 Definitely the yes. Maduro. Yeah. Padron does not make a bad cigar. No, they don't. Um, the 64 was introduced um, in 1994 to celebrate, it was a, to commemorate their 30 year anniversary. Lots of. Uh, this is their very, 50th this year. Yes. Uh, very, talk about toothy wrapper. I mean, these yeah. things are yes. chocolate with oil. Beautiful wrapper. It's box pressed. Um, tons of cocoa, coffee, leather, a little bit of spice. Very creamy cigar. It's, a, it's 
More between Great medium, cigar. somewhere to between medium and full body. Great cigar. Consistently on cigar aficionados, yeah, top, um, list. top 25. M matter of fact, a, a Padron has been in the top five every single year. Mm -hmm. um, so and it, it's not horribly priced either for for the quality of cigar you're getting. It's about eleven. Ten, and exclusive dollars like eleven dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Eleven dollar. Yeah. Eleven um, actually. And it's cool. Is that they they really age the tobacco in this. It's aged for four years before they make uh, the cigar out of it. Um, I can't say I, I can't say enough about that cigar. I mean, it's it's fantastic. Let me know when you've said enough. Can't hold you. <laughs> it's a great cigar. It is a good cigar. Hold on, hold on. I've said enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My number dose cigar. Number is, dose. <laughs> number dose. Is uh, a cigar that was created, Dangling. blended, and and really was the spirit behind the creation of the cigar. And sadly. The gentleman is no longer with us. Manny Ferraro from Ashton Cigars, several years ago, we were very fortunate. We were able to taste this cigar well before it came into the marketplace, and it's the Mio More. Mm. Mm. And this is uh, part of the... Uh, La Roma. La Roma, I lost it for a minute. The La Roma, but I always think it's the Mio More. Mm. This is a fantastic cigar for a lot of good reasons. I mean, the taste is just, to me, over the top. It's kind of on the, I would call it on the lower medium side, it's not a heavy cigar, but it's a very tasty cigar and very popularly priced. That's my number two cigar. I love the, I love that because I love the San Andreas wrapper on that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very good. Yeah. I remember when, yeah. I remember when we were all sitting around yeah. with Manny smoking those cigars before yeah. they came out. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. they were fantastic. I was kind of surprised on this year's top 25 cigar aficionado cigars, a Tiamo was in the top 10. Yeah. With the San Andreas. Yeah. Yeah. Check that out. They, that's a good cigar. What? The Tiamo? Yes, it was. Read your magazine. Oh. Oh, hold on. I'll go get it. Rob. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> All right. Um, my number two cigar is the Fuente Inejo Shark. Uh, um, that's cheating. It's, why is that cheating? <laughs> but I said it's so, so good. Cheating. It's got a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper and the filler and binder of both Dominican. Um, you can't say enough about that cigar, in my opinion. I think it's perfect. Almost, it's almost the perfect cigar. It's a box pressed torpedo. Um, the torpedo end's not box pressed, but the rest of the cigar is box pressed. Uh, it has the exact same filler and binder as the uh, Opus X, which I don't like. Which is a, it, it goes it's, to show you how much. It's very strange how much yeah. the, the wrapper actually yeah. uh, yep. does change the taste. Change the taste of the cigar. Um, I don't like that the Opus at all, but the Añejo yeah. is fantastic. It's my number two cigar in, in the world. I one they age the one of the what things, they, they age it in sherry oak casks. barrels. It's sherry a cask. cognac. Sherry. Sherry yeah. cask. Yeah. Sherry. sherry cask. Yeah. Cognac, yeah. cognac, sherry. For seven right. years. For seven cognac. years. Yeah. Cognac. Yeah. Cognac. I might yeah. add, cognac. I might add that these cigars are only available <laughs> once a year. Yeah, about once a year, right around Christmas time. Yep. And we um, do have plenty of yeah, them. Yeah, we have them all, the, all year round. Cause yeah, we try. We try to take, make them last. One day takes care of yeah. us, and we uh, we take ration, care of you. We, take, we ration them out, so, so yeah. everybody gets a chance. So everybody to gets enjoy a chance one. to have them. It is a great I cigar. I think it's a great cigar. It's got a lot of yeah. it's got a lot of cocoa yeah. taste yeah. to it, a chocolatey taste. I I think it's a, a fantastic cigar. Full bodied, full bodied cigar. Oh, it's definitely full bodied. Absolutely. So. Tia. I'm upset. I mean, I want to go first next time because everybody's stealing my stuff. So okay. just so you know, yeah. oh, my on, number two, which None is written you, down, you which is written down, is a Padron Anniversary 64. Well, you can both go to the Yeah, we're both number two. Okay, the diplomatic. There you go. That's a cigar. It's a bigger great cigar. Well, that's being pretty diplomatic. But I I agree with everything that Scott said. Um, I think the taste is amazing. You get a buttery flavor, almond. It's smooth, creamy. The construction is impeccable. Um, the draw is always consistent. Um, everything is always consistent. I love this cigar. When people come and ask me what's a great gift, I say okay. Drone Anniversary '64, definitely. Um, not. Nothing else I can really say about this. I mean, just talking about it gets me excited. So I just, Ooh. I love it. <laughs> wow. It does. I, yes, I, we can see that. Yes. Women, <laughs> women, women used to talk about me the same way. <laughs> just thinking of me, they used to get excited. It's, it's just, it really is just a great cigar. It really is. <laughs> what? What did I miss? Nothing. Not, not, I, think, I think in our waning moments, I'd like to have a, like a little roundtable discussion 
of why cigars burn the way they do. Oftentimes you'll light a cigar and it'll either burn down the side or, or, or there'll be like a little tunnel in the middle of it. And this is caused by several, several things. And I'll let our resident burn expert, Paul, kind of start the discussion on that. Well, the first the thing future. that affects the way a cigar burns is the construction of the cigar. So if the, the filler is not packed properly, if there are what they call voids or soft spots in the cigar or hard spots in the cigar, it's not going to burn straight. It's not going to burn consistently. And the heat's <laughs> going to go where it can. So if there's a hard spot or a soft spot or a great big arrow. Is that soft spot in your brain? Yeah, I guess so. I'm looking right at it. What else do you want me to do? I'm looking right there. Paul, you've clearly demonstrated that we are not professionals. <laughs> well, certainly I'm not. That's dying, for sure. I've been dying to do that for like 18 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It's so, a red so, light. So construction is the first thing that affects the way a cigar burns. The second thing is the uh, amount of oil mm -hmm. in the wrapper. Yep. Yeah. So when you get a very oily wrapper, the oils burn at a slightly different rate than the leaf itself burns. So then what you tend to get is one side burns a little bit faster than the other, or you get a little patch of tobacco that doesn't quite burn through. Um, <laughs> but those are, those are the two primary factors. Use or error. Also, like environment. <laughs> well, 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 how, well, how, well, about, how about the way you properly take care of it too, as well? I mean, if it's dried right. out, you know, yeah. if you're not properly humidifying your cigars, and you or try to or light over humidifying. Or them. yes. Exactly. Also, where you're smoking it, if you're smoking it outside, the wind might have something to do with it. Yeah. Or if, mm -hmm. if you're smoking in your car and you flick the ash out the window, well, you yeah. have just that hit of wind. But you haven't said one of the most important things. Oh, what? Sorry. How you light it? Use or air. Use or air. Well, but I think you got to go a little more in depth. We don't have time what do you to mean? Well, you good, feel free. You toast well, the foot. Yeah, well, if, if you don't toast the foot and you don't evenly burn it, and I like I circle it and in and, uh -huh. out, in and out, in and out, you know, you're oh going to get a goodness. side burner or a tunnel no, or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I'm a, what about Mother Nature? I mean, it's, it's a product of Mother Nature. Yeah. It's the environment. I mean, if it's a thinner and one it. It's mm -hmm. grown in the ground and plucked by people. Or how about this yeah. when it's toothy, like really toothy, those veins really can determine how it burns as well too because you can't really burn veins that well. I think we left you out in the boat without a paddle on that one. Why? I don't know. Just seen Hey, well, I smoke no. enough cigars to know that one. She does smoke. She's a smoking girl. She's smoking. Oh, smoking again, the time went by way too fast. And uh, even though some What's of our next cigar for next week? Oh, I don't um, know. No? Yeah, I do. The Toronto Masters are uh, Ooh. cigar for next week. Okay, uh, time to say goodbye, everybody. Yes, my nice <laughs> <laughs> Say good night, Gracie. Smoke happy and smoke <laughs> often. Quickly, guys. quickly. Bye, life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Uh, that's quickly, baby. I'm going to have to give me a catchphrase. <laughs> Ciao for now, everybody. Bye bye for now. Again, doublecigars.com. We thank you for your patronage and we thank you for viewing us. And we'll see you all bye. next week. Bye bye.